Look, the C6 is hovering. <laughs> Damn it. So yes, it is time for a quick C6 update. The last update I did with the C6 uh, was actually when I got back from unexpectedly taking it on holiday. Tomorrow, uh, I'm taking it to Silverstone. Not to go around the track. That would be thoroughly unsuitable. Um, but yeah, I going up to see the touring cars. So uh, needed to change the front tires, obviously mentioned in the holiday video, kind of holiday video, the front tires had been eaten. So these are the front wheels off the C6, these two here. And you can see it's absolutely mullered them, that trip to France. They are still legal. Um, there's probably about two and a half mil on them, but decided it's probably time to knock those ones on the head. Um, the innards, inside's okay, but obviously I, I can't remember how badly worn around the outside they were because the car they came off, of, I don't know what that, well, obviously it's a C5, but I don't know how bad the tracking was on that or what kind of driving that was having, but those are they're pretty hammered. And then the back one here, it's got a couple of Pirellis on the back, which is nice. Um, and this one, it's not too bad, it's actually worn a bit on the edges but as you can see a screw is present so I'm going to see if I can get that fixed as well uh, the tyres I've gone for are these budget tyres let's, let's not beat around the bush in fact having bought these I realise they are pretty much what is coming off those are Zeta these are Pace but they're both branded Alventi nice um, but they were cheap, they were £75 each. It would have been nice to put some Michelins or something like that on it, but I just haven't got the money to do it at the moment. You're talking, you know, two tyres for 150 or two tyres for 270 something like that, to do the same job and probably last the same amount of time. So I'll get these done. Uh, the man will be here in a minute to fit these, and then that's one more job ticked off the C6s list. But before I put the wheels back on, um, there are two things I want to look at. Uh, firstly, was the um, there was a little rattle coming from the offside front brake. Um, I noticed, actually noticed this before I went away on holiday. It goes away when you put your foot on the pedal. So if you put a bit of weight on the pedal and just take up some slack somewhere in the caliper area, it shuts up and it's silent. Brakes are working fine. I suspect, um, that one of the pads and one of the anti-rattle shims are having an argument and the pad is rattling very slightly inside the caliper but it could also be that i've forgotten to do the brakes up it could be that i've forgotten to tighten the bolts so that'd be funny uh, but also i've got that uh, warning light problem um which hubnut did okay he didn't do it but he he reported it on his way back from wales on the a34 possibly um, it came up with a uh, ABS wheel sensor fault and um, that brought up a traction control fault and that in turn then the handbrake started beeping and saying that was faulty which is annoying because I was happy that I got that working again when I first got the car. Uh, it's possible the handbrake thing or it's, it's a bit coincidental that it's just started doing it so I would say it's likely that the handbrake fault is related to the ABS sensor. Um, obviously, I changed an ABS sensor on it on the offside front when I did uh, the big purple bush job. Uh, I'm hoping that it's not that. Uh, hopefully, it's the other side because I've got another ABS sensor. I've got the I bought two at that time, and I still have the other one, so I could change that one. Um, but uh, we don't know. We'll have to plug it in and find out. Um, I do hope that the parking brake issue is related to the ABS sensor issue. Because if it's not, I've got two problems and that's annoying. Um, on a couple of occasions I've driven it and the speedo's gone a bit nuts. And obviously modern cars tend to take their speed inputs from the ABS sensors. Old cars, you had a, well. Here's one I made earlier. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, there's a gearbox and there's just that white thing there. Oh no. That's the uh, speedo drive. So on an old car, BX, that gearbox off, um, the diff is spinning a gear, which is spinning a cable, which goes into the back of a speedo and spins round and makes it go 
depending on how fast the cable's spinning. And then later cars, that got replaced by an electronic transducer, which was either gear-driven or hall effect or something like that. And that drove an electric speedo, but on cars like this, it takes all four wheels, and it takes the speed of all of them. So if one of them goes down, you have got other wheels. But um, I'm going to go and wash my hands, and then I'm going to move Clement. It's Clement. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is quite funny because I've got the SM, Clement, and the C6 all in one shot, I think. Oh, no, I haven't. You can't see, no, you can't see the SM. Well, it's there. I shall now extract Clement from under the ramp. Luckily, Clement drives, so this will be easier than a lot of the other cars in this place. Ugh. Clement has no keys. Clement, okay, Clement is of a certain character, but it still needs keys. Let's uh, fire up this smooth sound of Clement. Rise, Clement! Um, okay, what's, okay, what's happened here? Oh, dear. Mm. Uh. what's happened here? It's fine. Enough in the sea here. <laughs> Just going through some uh, faults here on the system. Still jammed in French. Quite a few. Some of those were there before. I know the injection one. That's all right, it's just switching things on and off and the car's not liking it. Um, yeah, there's a, yeah, the gearbox has got two, injection's got two. It's the ABS I'm looking for. So yeah, basically just letting it go through it's a very slow laptop and a very clunky system but mm, I'm gonna try and find out what that knock is on the front as well I'll do that in a minute incidentally I found out what my fault on the uh, passenger door mirror is remember I had that on the uh... there it is um, do you remember I had that on the um, first video uh, it's because I've got a c5 mirror glass fitted that's the proper mirror glass there which is one that kind of uh, auto dims as well as a chrome is it chromatic or whatever it is uh, similar to the uh, rear view mirror um, the passenger one those are a lot of money and I so I fitted a c5 glass which is just a uh, heated one and uh, the computer knows and it's not happy right bit of peace and quiet so we've got some faults on the uh, fuel injection ABS gearbox Suspension, uh, generally. I'm intrigued to see what that is. The tyres, uh, the um, pressure sensors have been disabled, I think. Handbrake has a fault, which is hopefully related to the um, ABS, as I say. Door mirror, what was the other one? Oh, phone. Yeah, the phone's got one. Well, it doesn't have a SIM card in it, so that's probably what that is. Who knows? I don't really care. Right. Let's have a look, see, what's the ABS saying? Uh, it's saying something in French. No, it's okay, that's just a warning to say, be careful. Signal, there you go, so it's a, it looks like a, a sensor. Uh, avant, that's front. Gauche, a gauche, a droite, left, front left, I think that is. Let's just double check on the translation. Signal, sensor, front wheel, speed, 
goal. Yeah, so I think that's the front left ABS sensor, which is a result because I have an ABS sensor, so I might even try doing that now. I mean, I can try wiping it, but I imagine it's not going to wipe because if it's a sensor that's gone down, it's a sensor that's gone down. It says it's done, but I would imagine it might stay away until the car drives. Yeah, see, it doesn't have one there. Let's just try firing it up because it will run a test. There you go. Yeah, it's not happy. Now, we've got some suspension faults, but these could also be because of the ABS sensor. So, let's have a look. Uh, well, the second one looks like it is because it's got an ESP problem. Detect information issued by the Dynamic Stability Control ESP CU. So, that's because of the ABS problem. I think that's probably the same as the one below it. Let's have a look. Defect on front wheel speed information not received by CAN network. Ah, yes, okay. So the suspension needs the speed input from the car to uh, to set itself because each corner is independently controlled and it hasn't got speed input from that front left. Of course, I was saying the suspension is related to the ABS sensor and I was actually looking at the gearbox, but hey-ho. I reckon the suspension will be the same. There's two suspension so ECU elements, there's the kind of the hydropneumatic control, the hydractive control, sorry, and the AMVAR side of things, which is the active damping. Yeah, lack of information again from the uh, speed sensor. Okay, I think I'm going to burst through all these and wipe them, but pretty sure, well, maybe I should change the sensor first. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? I remember the fun and games I had taken this out last time. This is just to get to the ABS sense of wiring where it passes through into the engine bay. This side looks like it is going to be harder to do than the other side. Brilliantly. Oh, I got my wish. I'll be careful with those sensors. The tyre, uh, the lane departure warning, um, when we were in France, it started working sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like you go over, uh, you drive down the road, and if you cross the white line and you don't indicate, and the car senses you've gone over the white line, the seat starts pulsing on one of your butt cheeks, depending on which side you've gone over. Um, I think it was. I don't think it was the whole thing. I can't remember. Didn't do it that often. Um, yeah, it works all right, but it doesn't work in the UK, so I guess it's work. <laughs> it's designed for the white lines in France, not the white lines in the UK. But, uh, and now it's not working at all, again. And the C4 I had before, it didn't work on that either. But if that's the thing that's not gonna work, I'll take it, because I'm not really bothered. Um, so I'll show you the, the situation. That is where, that wire there, you've got the cable ties around that sort of shinier cable. Uh, that's the ABS sensor, so that's where it passes through into the engine bay. So it'll just be a case of unchipping some bits and bobs in there to get to that. The other end is going to be <laughs> there. Get that bolt out. That won't come out of there, I can guarantee it. I'm going to have to get fighty with it. And the problem in getting the old one out isn't getting the bolt out. The bolt is... It is rusty, of that there is no doubt, but getting the bolt to undo, I reckon I could probably do it one-handed. So you just, if you get a rusty Allen key, it's always worth knocking it in with a hammer, the socket, because it'll shock the bolt as well. Oh look, <laughs> yeah, so that's not gonna be the problem. Oh, oh, hang on. Let's film you in real time, viewer. Because I think we might have a miracle on our hands. <gasps> that never happens! You saw that, right? You... 
You did see that. That never happens. Wow. Okay. So obviously I'm going to have massive struggles elsewhere because that cannot be as easy as that. I mean, I've had the week from hell, if I'm honest, working on cars. It's been a disastrous week. So that, the C6 has just made me happy. Right, so I've unsnipped all the uh, wires that had it cable tied to the other bit of loom there and passes into the engine bay through that hole. So I'm gonna have to go around the engine bay side and see if we can find it. If I shine a light in the engine bay, can we see the light through the hole? That is how packed a C6 engine bay is. Oh. That's what I've got it over by the headlight somewhere. That's how cramped a C6 engine bay is. So I'm going to have to take something out to get to that, aren't I? There we go. So that will go uh, down there somewhere. And then that one goes over the top of there. And that one goes in there. And that one goes in there. And then that, complete with new bolt goes in there and then you do that up root everything tie it all up blah 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 put all the airbox back on and everything and then i have to i mean i'm gonna have to drive it to see if it works um but uh yeah i think well i mean if it didn't work it's tough because it's gonna have to stay like that but um yeah we'll uh button it all back up and See how it see how it went. Um, I'll check on that rattly brake on the other side first, though. Here we go, all plugged in and buttoned up. Uh, I noticed. Look at this. I noticed. Just in case you don't speak French, look at that. That's probably what that's for, isn't it? No. Hmm. Um, I just noticed also that on the off side, uh, sorry, on the near side, my lane departure warning sensor is loose, so that could be why it's temperamental. I shall find out. Uh, right, well, that's the original screw. Oh, I've got a dirty face. Right, so that's the original screw that went into the bottom of the um, uh, lane departure warning thing, and it's just spinning. So it's, it just screws into a plastic body, so it's obviously stripped half the plastic out. So I've managed to find, slightly shorter, hopefully that mm, won't be a problem. I don't know, but it's a fair bit fatter. Oh, nearly lost it. Yeah, another screw there. So I'm just going to whack that one in. I need a screwdriver first. But yeah, I'm gonna pop that one in, and see if that holds that sensor in place. Uh, it does appear to be holding it. It's um, quite tight. Just have to see if it lasts. Um, I have to be honest, I was having reservations over something. Um, I wasn't mentioning it, because I didn't want to be mocked. But you see that wire there? Uh, this one. So that's the ABS sensor wire. And to me, that looks like there's not a lot of free play in that. It's not very slack, it's quite taut. And the steering is turned in at the moment. So when I go to turn on full lock the other way, that's gonna get ripped and stretched and stuff, isn't it? No. No, because that bit doesn't turn. Unlike, it's got a floating knuckle, hasn't it? So the bit in there turns, that bit doesn't. So all that has to do, that cable there, is just go up and down. <laughs> it just has to go, you know, it's at full droop at the moment. So that's, that's as extended as it gets when it, you know, when you put the car back on the ground, that's got more slack on it. So no worry, that is how it is. All right, so I've moved over to the driver's side now. Um, I've put some bolts back in. Uh, these two, I've had to put nuts on. Helps if I film it. Put too much grease on that. I'm gonna take some of that off, I think. Um, yeah, so I've put, I uh, don't know why I'm taking that out, but it's got to come out eventually, isn't it? Um, yeah, there's no retaining bolts on this disc. They were just the holes where they're supposed to go. And I imagine in the hub there is the remains of a retaining bolt. So what I've done is I've put two big, huge nuts over a spacer. So now I've been able to do these two bolts up and that's kept the disc tight. And now I can try and figure out what's loose around here because Something's rattling, but I don't know what, so I'm gonna have a little look. 
You know, one of the wear wires is just broken out completely. Might as well just remove those because they're not actually plugged in. Uh, there's a little tiny bit of play in the pins. Is is that it? Yeah, I think it's the. I think it's just the pads rattling and the bolts are all tight. When you put your foot over the brake pedal, well, push it a little bit, it, sh it shuts up straight away. So, yeah, the, the I think it's just the manufacturer of pad, to be honest. Can't see an issue in there. I should have got Febby ones. Oh, well, yeah, so if it, if it becomes a real problem, I'll um, I'll just have to put some different pads in it. Maybe change the slider pins. I put way too much grease on it. Yeah, there's a tiny bit of play in the sliders as well. They've done 160,000, I suppose. So, right, wheels back on. All still looking good at the back here. My uh, C5 bump stops appear to be holding up okay. So, yeah, done. Well, I mean, it must have done about 4,000 miles since it did all that work on it. I wonder if you can drive a C6 on three wheels. Oh, there we go. Uh, bunch of repaired tyre on the back. New tyres on the front. I mean, technically, uh, I probably should reset the suspension height because I've changed, in changing the tyres, I've changed the uh, radius between the centre of here and here because there's more tread on these tyres and, I mean, they're very similar to the ones that were on it before, but they are different tyres. So I'm not going to do that now because just mm, I've got too much to do. Um, just going through resetting some uh, fault codes. But as you can see, yay, handbrake light is on. So the handbrake's working real good. So yeah, that about does it. Um, C6 is uh, going well, and hopefully we'll be up to Silverstone tomorrow to watch some racing cars go around the track. I should probably clean it. It's disgusting. Hmm. Right, I'm gonna find out what the hell's wrong with that.